Hey guys, uh, so this is me. Uh, so my name is Surya and uh, I'm one of the co-founders at Skillink. And uh, thank you so much for taking time and attending uh, today's session. We have been um, listening from a lot of folks who are interested in our uh, design courses, in our uh, CFD, in our uh, C uh, computer-aided engineering to kind of have a very open one-on-one -on -one, uh, ask me anything kind of a, a session. So what we decided was to do a series of AMAs and uh, this particular series, the, the is, this particular workshop uh, is the first uh, first of uh, three AMAs. So today we'll uh, be speaking about design and uh, how, how to build design-oriented careers. Uh, if you are someone in design engineering and if you are interested in design, uh, this particular, uh, in the next one to one and a half hours, what you will be listening is uh, how you can build a design-oriented profile uh, what are the different kind of design jobs and uh, what are the uh, opportunities that are available in design engineering, right? Uh, so I have Subhu with me. Uh, Subhu, is, uh, uh, Subhu uh, is one of our uh, senior design engineers. So he uh, is also uh, working as a head of design engineering at Skillink. Uh, but uh, in, parallel, um, in parallel, what he basically does is he has around... 10 to 15 years of experience in body and white design, especially. So he started his career in Renault Nissan and uh, from there on worked at Mercedes Benz and right now works for Scania. And uh, he's basically joining us from Sweden. Uh, and uh, uh, Subhu, thank you so much for joining. And uh, if you could give a quick introduction of yourself, that would be really helpful. Hello, hello, guys. <clears throat> Uh, I am Subramanian Janaki Raman and uh, I have been associated with Skilling quite some years, around four or five years. And uh, I have around 15, around 15 years of experience in automobile domain, working for OEMs, starting from Renault Nissan, where I worked for Nissan projects, continuing to Mercedes Benz uh, from Bangalore and in Germany. And uh, I am now working as a supply quality manager for Scania Trucks. Parallelly, I am also heading this design engineering team at Skilling. So this is me. I am a basic uh, mechanical engineer with my bachelor's from Anna University. Uh, yeah, a normal guy from a normal family. Thank you, Subhu. Uh, so, guys, uh, uh, as you as you basically see, uh, Subhu, uh, we, uh, both Subhu and I basically did our engineering in Chennai in one of the tire, uh, probably we would say tire two, tire three, uh, tire two college, um, and not not IITs, not uh, uh, NITs, but uh, uh, the ability to kind of build a po portfolio uh, in BIW and work for a company like Scania. Uh, and that too in Sweden, right? Uh, so it's a unique career path. So the, these are your dream jobs, right? You want to work at Renault Nissan, you want to work at Mercedes Benz, and you want to kind of explore what's happening across uh, the world. And uh, Subhu basically has worked for Mercedes Benz uh, uh, in the U uh, in Germany as well. And uh, he basically has experience in Germany. When he was in Renault Nissan, he worked in Japan uh, as well. And uh, right now, he is uh, fully uh, working in Sweden uh, with Scania. And, and these kind of unique experiences, right, can be achievable uh, from a Tier 2 or a Tier 3 college also. And that's what we want to kind of uh, gi uh, give you an uh, idea about, right? So it is not only available for IITs or uh, NIT kind of students. Um, and you don't need to be a 90 percentage uh, student as well. You don't need to be a, a, a eight GPA or a nine GPA. It's all about the fundamentals, right? And that's that's something that uh, we are going to discuss today. So, as more people join, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I can basically take a look at is uh, a lot of you might not be able to hear. It's because you have not uh, allowed uh, or you have not joined uh, audio. So, Kaushik, if you can basically. Uh, ask people to join audio if they are not able to uh, uh, listen uh, that would be great and also uh, if you are not able to hear do let us know right guys uh, this is going to be a interactive session right uh, i have a few questions that i want to ask uh, subhu and take it forward uh, so just to kind of give you a brief overview about myself so i'm surya i, I uh, did my 
undergrad in Chennai, mechanical engineer. Again, I did my master's at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Then went on to work for Cummins in the U.S. and uh, from there on, I uh, worked at Cummins as a technical product development engineer for around four years. Uh, then realized uh, engineering education in India uh, did not ha- uh, uh, kind of help me or is not helping engineers get the right industry relevant skills. So quit my job and moved back to India to kind of uh, start Skilllink and. Uh, Probably you might have heard about Skilllink. If you haven't heard about Skilllink, Skilllink is a platform which provides a, a deep technical uh, courses that uh, not only teaches you a particular tool, but also the engineering behind a particular domain, right? And that's what we do. Uh, and uh, this particular AMA is uh, going to be focused on design, right? Uh, so when we say design, people think it's just about uh, extrude, revolve, or uh, say sweep, right? Or uh, if I know AutoCAD, if I know SolidWorks, if I know CATIA, I can become a design engineer. So unfortunately, that is the wrong aspect of it, right? Uh, so design is multi-level. Uh, and uh, so there is an option to annotate. I would uh, definitely recommend you guys not to annotate because it kind of uh, disturbs the flow, right? Uh, Kaushik, should I uh, stop annotate or have you stopped annotate? And um, okay, I'll stop annotating, uh, Surya. So basically, I'll stop the option. Yeah, stop annotate and uh, yeah, that, and uh, put everyone on mute. That would be really helpful. Okay, guys, uh, there is a chat box. Uh, so I'm going to say hi. Uh, and uh, uh, if you all can hear me, you can say yes in the chat box. Okay, lovely. So you guys can hear me, right? So what we are going to do is we, uh, since we, we have around uh, 90 to 100 people, we are going to mute all of you. Right? So we are going to mute all of you. Uh, and what we will basically do is uh, we will be enable the chat box, right? The chat box will ha- have the ability for you to ask any question. The way this next one hour is going to be is uh, to help you understand about design and kind of solve your common design questions, right? Um, so those are those are the things that uh, we are going to look at, right? Adarsh is saying my voice is low. Kaushik, uh, uh, how is my voice? Yeah, now it's perfect. After uh, you got the earphones closer, it's perfect now. Okay, great. So uh sounds good so let, let let's get started uh, i know there are going to be a lot of people coming in but uh uh let's get started right so so uh, a few aspects of it that i wanted to kind of discuss as the uh, as we get started right is uh, uh when people think about design uh, as i said they think about oh okay i need to learn solidworks i need to know CATIA, i need to know uh nxcad or uh, whatnot and they think about uh if i n- know how to design a bottle if i know how to design a line a square a rectangle a, a circle a solid a extrude or a revolve then i am a design engineer right but uh, as you see in the industry uh, you have you have been there in, in the industry for like 12 to 15 years and uh, from my limited knowledge so i know design is basically split into say product development design and manufacturing design Right. And in probably product uh, development, there are multiple areas in which a design engineer can work in. So if you could help us understand uh, what are the different product development areas in which a design engineer can uh, start his career in or a design engineer's role is really important. So it can be right from the sketching uh, phase. Uh, ideation, sketching, and then product development, in product development, lighting, seating. So yeah, if you if you can kind of uh, talk through your thought process on uh, design and design engineering roles in the product uh, development stage, that would be really helpful. Nice, nice. So, yeah, thanks a lot for this uh, introduction and thanks a lot guys for joining this. Uh, <clears throat> hope you all hear me. Uh, firstly, Talking about this design engineering role, there is a very wide uh, range of thinking that if I know to work on any kind of a 3D modeling tool, I would definitely get a job. That impression is firstly a negative aspect. Like every university has its own curriculum and they have their, uh, on one of your years, you might also learn to work on any one of the 
3D modeling softwares. Yes, I agree. I also learned ANSYS Pro E uh, when I was an engineer in a school in a college. But that didn't help a lot because that is not what the person who is going to recruit you is expecting. <clears throat> See me, if I'm going to think from the company's perspective, when I'm looking for a design engineer, I would just see how strong his basics is and how quick I can train him because every person I employ is an investment to the company and uh, the output what you start giving is going to be the returns of investments for me. So this is the very basic level. And on that situation, how would I increase my competency? Now in India specifically or more <clears throat> in the Southern India, there are quite a lot of uh, uh, engineers coming out every year. Now, <clears throat> most of them are very strong on their books but some of, but on that crowd there are quite a lot of people who are not very good on their practical knowledge when i say practical knowledge i tend to mean that how you approach a design how you approach i mean i can go and ask what a simple harmonic motion to somebody and that used to be a person who can definitely define the uh, simple harmonic motion very likely to how it looks in the book but that is not the person whom i'm going to recruit as a recruiter I'm going to recruit a person who understands what simple harmonic motion basically is. So you as a fresher, it would be really nice for you to know the basic background of what you are going to do. So if I'm going to get into an automotive industry where I've been posted as a design engineer for some commodity, it is your first mandatory point that you will have to learn the basics of it, which means the functionality of the product. You might have not even seen the product definitely, but it is also good to know the functionality of the product. It is very easy to create an emboss anywhere in the park, or it is very easy to do a surface modeling or a solid modeling or whatever. But you will have to know why you do a model, why you draw a sketch, and what does that sketch infer. That is very, very important to uh, a person who wants to become a design engineer or who wants to grow his career career as a design engineer. I could also see that there are quite a lot of people who are in the production for at least two or three years wants to come to the design engineering field <clears throat> because this looks really fancy. This design engineering field looks really fancy. Uh, you don't have to wear your uniforms uh, like how you do in your uh, production team. Uh, you don't have to uh, sweat yourself, but you sit in a lazy place. You have your own PC. You just talk with people. You just uh, uh, do something on your computer and then finally you get your salary. But my, my personal impression is the person who is doing the design should also know the production processes because whatever you do has to be produced by the production colleagues. So the production colleagues who wants to shift to design engineering, you don't have to regret that you had already spent twice two or three years or a couple of years in the production industry because that is going to teach you a lot when you start designing your commodity. So, like it sees in the world, design engineering field and production field is not two different fields. It is both inter integrated. The computer is integrated to the machine via design engineers V, right? So you will have to model a part and you should know the reason why you do so, so why you do uh, such things. It, it is just not, uh, uh, okay, uh, maybe I am, I, I'm, I'm now, uh, doing a scale model of uh, uh, Audi A3, something like that. I can do the skin panels, yes. I can make a lookalike of an A3, yes. That is also a skill set. But every character on the skill, on the skin panel, depicts something. Every character has a benchmarking. Every character has a, a value for it, right? The fluidic design of Hyundai Varna created a storm in Indian industry. The reason for it is not only because of the looks, the looks alone can also deceive a part, but for every styling curve, what they had, it played a lot of role on the aerodynamics of the vehicle. That increased even mileage of the car. Most of the people will not believe if I say this. A proper aerodynamics of the car is also playing an important role. So the person who is working on the styling team, who is just preparing the surface of the car, should know why he does something. There might be inputs from the market. There might be inputs from benchmarking team. There may be inputs from your fellow colleagues that, okay, my part is colliding with your part, so you'll have to do something. So all these interactions you gather, it is a knowledge bank. Design engineers are basically a knowledge bank. They get information from everywhere. 
it is that particular designer's responsibility to remember all these things and adopt the required features on the required place so design engineering is just not 3d modeling it is 3d engineering so you do something for some particular reason you just do you just don't do it for the sake of doing it and what that reason you will have to investigate you will have to identify and then you will have to go ahead so when i go and recruit a three year uh, experienced person for a, a biw team if somebody comes to me and says like okay i had been working for food i wanted to be a food engineer i would not ask his 3d competency of how quick he can build the food i would definitely ask him what do you know about food and what would you consider when you design a food of the that if he just says like okay food is the bonnet it is used to cover the engine compartment and says nothing else i would definitely not choose Him. he might be a very good 3d person he might be highly competent in 3d but my intention is not that anybody who works in the tool for two or two and a half months continuously can learn the tool very easily and it can be any tool i had worked in catia i had worked in ideas i had worked in nmx from all these three softwares what i could learn is the generic approach is always the same between interfaces these are all just interfaces and not three different tools hope uh, uh, everybody agree to it also <clears throat> right so but i would recruit a person in the hood who can tell me the functionality of the hood who talks about frontal crash who talks about child impact who talks about euro regulations i would definitely need him for you to know about child impact for you to know about uh, frontal crash ft now the world is very wide you can definitely know it from anywhere and as a design engineer or as a person who is aspiring to be a successful design engineer you will have to think on the other direction that your cad competency is not the only thing what is needed for you to get into an oem or a tie on tie to company also right for us to get involved into an <clears throat> oem work for an automotive work for a car work for a bus truck you will have to know the basics of what you do you will have to know the background of what you construct what you design so only 3d modeling is not going to help anymore it wasn't helping even when i started my career <clears throat> i know people who are very very good at 3d modeling i know they have not got shortlisted on any of the interviews and i know people who were from the production background who got shortlisted to a very high roles on the uh, design engineering field i know also people who was uh, 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 media career level on both the fields who know little of the production knowledge little of also the design knowledge little of the life de- lifetime development of the vehicle they were also shortlisted but only 3d knowledge is definitely not so not not sufficient that is what i could uh, at least start this day with great uh, subhu thanks a lot right uh, so uh, let me kind of so there were a lot of terminologies that are uh, you uh, you used uh, while you basically spoke about uh, design right and uh, uh, let me ask the audience guys do, how many of you know what a skin panel is what a emboss uh, what a styling curve uh, a biw is so how many of you know what a biw is can you type in what a, what a biw is okay great so so i can see like uh, five to six responses uh, which basically uh, means uh, baw basically means body in white right uh, so f- for folks who basically say uh, w- so it is okay w- what is a body in white subu can you give give an idea of what is body in white <clears throat> yeah okay the car what we see outside is kind of dressed uh, I- it's a car which is uh, i it is like a woman i at least treat the car like a woman okay it is like my friend or girlfriend or something like that so the car which is coming out is well dressed woman with all the jewels all the accessories and etc but baw is kind of uh, uh, without any dress uh, it would it would sound vulgar but but it is the structure what is actually uh, holding the car actually so you whenever you okay this might be a very easy example now uh, most of us are experienced with the cars when you open the hood you could also see some structures inside the hood, under the hood and that is baw when when there is a collision of a body when you could have seen a lot of cars getting accidents uh, after the accidents you can see a lot of structures inside the car and that structure is baw so the basic body integration which is 
absorbing all the energy and dissipating it outside the gut that is what is the, the functionality of a BAW we call it body in white it is the gray material it is not a painted it is not an added with your chassis components it is not added with your seats it is not added with your uh, instrument panels it is just the steel part or the metal part uh, of the car which is actually uh, 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 just before you start uh, addressing the car that is uh, the BAW so so just to give you what an uh, idea of what subu is saying right so it's what you're seeing in my screen is your body in white right mm -hmm. so as design engineers all right uh, if you want to get into an automotive uh, automotive industry right uh, a four wheeler automotive industry there are different types of roles or opportunities that you might uh, come across say for example if you are in the ideation stage probably that's where subo uh, when he mentioned about uh, styling skin panel so those are uh, the uh, ideation phase where you also do clay modeling those kind of aspects of it right from ideation to design right uh, so that's where your uh, say you you basically build your uh, master sections your baw components and so on so subu subu might be a better person to explain uh, the whole uh, development cycle but what you need to understand is say for example when you design this uh, body in white component right uh, so a great example might be probably this one right this let's take this view or uh, this this particular image so in this particular image what you are seeing uh, right now is uh, so out here what you see right your fender your side wall your rear fender your trunk lid your roof these are body in white components and then there is also your body in white so what when when subu mentions about okay when you design a hood you need to understand the functional requirement you need to understand the design requirement you need to understand the safety requirement you need to understand the gap and flushness requirement right as a design engineer what you are expected from the company is to understand these requirements and here is where you will start understanding about what uh, reinforcements are well, say for example if you are taking a hood uh, the functionality of the hood is to open and close now if you want to open and close then you need hinges so that it can move in a particular axis right uh, you can think about your door uh, of a, of your room and it has a particular hinge through which it moves and very similarly a hood also needs a hinge now when you are putting a hinge then you you basically uh, reduce the localized strength at that particular point so you need a reinforcement right uh, what kind of reinforcement should you have and where all should those reinforcements come so that aspect of design is the functional is designing for functional requirement so, right and then there is crash and safety say when frontal crash happens you need the force to dissipate in such a way that the crash does not affect the passenger and the crash does not affect the uh, uh, passer by but the force needs to dissipate right how how do you think about that what is the design that you come up, come up into so those are things as a design engineer you need to start looking at and that's what subo is basically think, uh, saying when when he is saying hey i have so you might see in linkedin or your friends uh, kind of just putting a sketch of a, a car right just the surface of the car but that does not mean anything because all all that they do is basically take a particular component and draw a draw that component in a in a computational tool but when they do not know how and why they are doing that right that's where the whole gap starts to widen right and what subu is saying today is you need to shorten that gap that can gap can be shortened in multiple ways we can come to that later but these are aspects that you need to start thinking about because say subu being a baw design engineer he is able to speak about baw but i'm pretty sure so subu how many say for example in baw alone in renault nissan how many departments were there to design the baw alone <laughs> uh for this BAW alone, uh, I could say there were around six, seven departments, and in Renault Nissan we were around two hundred and fifty people uh, uh, working on one BAW, one BAW component, starting from the fender, hood, and uh, the structures. So it, it is around two hundred, two hundred and fifty people per car. 
So if there are two or three cars for which we are designing uh, simultaneously, uh, we would try managing it between uh, the same person or we would even increase the number of people. But as a team, there used to be eight or nine teams and uh, every team will have around 10 to 15 members to work on that commodity. I have included the chassis, the floor, uh, the hood, fender, closure components, body structures, wheels, seats. So, so when you speak about uh, the components, what are the different BAW components? Your hood, fender, roof, tailgate, uh, your uh, uh, your uh, roof, roof. Hood, fender, tailgate, roof, side door. Dash complete. Dash complete is the separation between the engine compartment region and the passenger cabin. And our our uh, and the passenger cabin has a floor, and this floor is again front floor and the rear floor. It is divided into front and rear floor because of the two different regions. Front cabin is different, and rear cabin is because of the seating posture. Generally, it differs between the front cabin and the second cabin. And third is uh, so now, and then the engine compartment. Engine compartment is the base value where you place your engine and it is not only the engine which is available there it also has the uh, uh, strut housings uh, suspension mountings and other structures so that is engine compartment and after all these things you have your uh, uh, frontal bumper structure and the rear bumper structure we see bumper only as a plastic part but apart inside this plastic part inside this plastic injection molded part there is also a structure which is Produced by a BAW goalie, who is actually, uh, which is actually saving the uh, saving the crash. So uh, these are all <clears throat> okay. Uh, we are just talking about the very top level assembly. When you get in, there are almost a smaller car. I mean, and I am talking about an Alto now. An Alto is having around 893 BAW components. An Alto, which is a smaller car, has around 893 components. So to build this 893 components, you need at least minimum of 50 to 60 people to work on these components. Correct or not? I am talking only about the metal. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, which is great, right? So guys, when you when you basically speak, so when you kind of think of design engineering roles, one of the things that you need to start uh, start thinking about is. Uh, so when you start planning a career, right, you need to plan a career in such a way that, that you know what are the options in the career, right? So let me let me kind of break it down. Say, for example, I want to uh, say in, in my undergrad, I wanted to design cars, right? It is very easy. So I, when I'm a third year, fourth year, or just a pass out, I think, okay, designing a car is very simple. Uh, just one guy can design or probably two guys can design, right? But just to let you know, the BAW components of a car are known, right? Which are the sheet metal components, right? These components alone have around 250 people working on it and 250 design people working on the BAW components alone. Apart from these BAW components, there are plastic components, right? Your trims, uh, what are the, so what are the different type of components? So there are BAW, there are plastics, that is, uh, say, the surface level. So, what are the different yes. uh, different aspects of a car? Say, let's take just an automobile because that's very easily yeah. relatable. And uh, what are the different aspects of a car? And what type of, say, plastic modeling, sheet metal, surface, and solid? Like, if you think about it, what are the different teams that are, uh, uh, will go? Yeah. No, I, I, I'll try talking like a common man, okay? So, I'm just coming out of my schools and I'm getting into a car. Okay. I'm getting into my car. So what all I see, everything is engineering. So I open my door, the door outside is a sheet metal part, whereas inside it is a plastic part, which is covering the sheet metal. So we, once we touch the door, we have already handled two types of materials. One is sheet metal and one is plastic. And inside this plastic, we have a module. That module is carrying the power window switch or the window regulator and the glass, which goes in and comes out. So within this door commodity, you now have switches, which is made of plastics, sometimes uh, PP material. And next is this door trim panel, which is again a thermosetting plastic or a normal plastic. And then this windshield glass and then the seat metal part again. And then once I get and sit inside the car, the seats that is 
textiles and fabrics that is a different story we are not concentrating a lot on that now right now and then i see my instrument panel which is a plastic and it has a lots of electronic components and then i again see my windshield glass and above is my roof headliner that is a different kind of plastic which is we call it as thermo setting plastic so we have this uh, uh, insulation material a, a, a sponge kind of insulation material which is hardened above which you apply a textile or a vinyl component above which you laminate a textile or a vinyl component and that becomes a thermo setting plastic part and that becomes your roof headliner you cannot have the same plastic material of a door to a roof because that becomes very hard correct and that also doesn't give a proper feeling this this side doors the plastic of the side door is kind of a premiumness whereas the roof is kind of also a safety also a safety and this is uh, when you have that thick big component it is also going to be expensive so just i am entering the i am opening my door and entering and sitting in my car i could already see seven different materials correct so uh, this is uh, including plastics injection molded thermo setting and the uh, uh, sheet metal parts that might be aluminum casting etc etc that is different levels and which glasses and some modules so we already see six or seven type of materials just by entering into the car right <clears throat> and apart from this there is wiring harness as well subu wiring harness yes. lighting uh lighting uh, there are design engineers who design the lighting aspect of it there yes. are design engineers who i could i could brief about that also so there is going to be a, <clears throat> okay let me come by teams now now this is this baw team there is also going to be this <clears throat> interiors and exteriors team what do these interiors and exteriors will do interiors work on this uh, headliners plastic parts exteriors work on the plastic parts uh, exterior the plastic which is the front bumper and rear bumper there is also going to be a team which is working specifically on the seats seats in which you sit so how what type of seat are you going to use and there is going to be a team which is working on wiring harness which is actually doing this electrical activities electronics and electrical activities and there is one separate team which works on the instrument panel which designs and develops this instrument uh, uh, cluster of the car so they 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 design this instrument cluster and they see how better it is going to look and to design there is a different story that is a very big story to for you to come to that conclusion of the design is another big story i'm just telling what kind of teams we have now an instrument panel will be a separate team the tires and wheels alone will be a separate team the chassis components will be a separate team engine itself will be a separate team glasses will be a separate team and uh, modules uh, when i say modules it might be because uh, the hinges and uh, body modules what i'm talking about is body modules the hinges and the rubber sealants what you see when you open and close the doors that is an nvh part that would be a separate team insulations itself is a separate team which uh, this insulation team comes under nvh noise vibration harness team they try to add insulation material on some areas of the car which is actually reducing the uh, which is actually reducing the noise inside so thereby increasing the nvh of the car so that would be a separate team there are uh, see now i think i have mentioned almost 11 or 12 number of teams just to build one car whatever we are talking now is uh, the number of people or number of teams involved in building one car from the scratch and 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 uh, to kind of uh, uh, give an idea uh, and this is only when when you start thinking about uh, product development this is only the product development phase then there yes. is the manufacturing design phase right yes. so the yes. manufacturing design phase basically uh, is probably mold design how to design the mold for the plastic component uh, how to design the fixture for the baw component and much yes. more right what yes. are, what are those aspects of it okay so the complete design phase will be almost for 3 years sir. and on uh, uh, after this first or one or first after the completion of one year that is the basic design is frozen we already start contacting this uh, production colleagues and these production colleagues what they do is with the part what you had given they start designing the tool so they start designing the jigs and fixtures so uh, uh, and that, and then they start giving you feedbacks like okay uh, i have a machine I, i hope everybody understand the fact that machine is different and tool is different 
the machine is the part, the is the machine carries the tool to produce your part so uh, these production colleagues starts already uh, developing the tool for the part you are going to produce so every time when you design you send the part to your production colleagues and you get their feedback okay is this producible do we have the facilities to produce this or can we prepare a tool for this uh, design and then he says okay there are many different directions of the part many different draw directions in this part we will have to have one common draw directions where we produce almost all parts of the part and then he he recommends us a draw direction for the part and after this draw direction comes into picture we then uh, uh, modify the design as a designer we modify the design and then give it back to the production colleagues and after they design after they complete this tooling simulations and design tool uh, uh, jigs tools fixtures designs they will say like okay now the design is frozen now we can stop uh, doing any modifications and then they start building the tool so they will have to produce a tool correct a tool can either be steel or an aluminium steel tool they use for less volumes and aluminium tool they use for larger volumes we when we talk about 50000 cars per year then we go for an aluminium tool when we talk about 100 vehicles we go for a steel tool because that is sufficient correct it is about how strong the tool is it is the same logic of how strong our part is also so after 3 years it again takes 1 to 2 years for you to build the tool and start the production of the car the first car comes out of the plant after 5 years of the scratch of the design okay today i am pending down to draw a car after 5 years i launch the car on the market exactly and and to think about one thing that impresses me is uh, um the depth of design uh, involved in each of these components right so you can basically it can be instrument panel it can be uh, wiring harness it can be engines chassis tire and wheel and every mm-hmm. every aspect of it so every so what sugu is saying out here is every component that you basically put on a car is to be designed right yeah. you just think how many components how many moving components and static components are on a car and who designs them right so this is and that are certain standard components usually say for example a lot of engines are usually standard lot of suspensions are usually standard but again putting all of them together right those teams are at least a 500 to 1000 member team in any company uh, the design team alone right and uh, what what you guys should take away from this is there are one the first thing that you should take away is the you have a lot of opportunities to be if you want to become a design engineer there are a lot of opportunities right so some people basically come up and uh, so for uh, they will ask career assistance and say sir uh, design engineering is a uh, eroding field uh, I, i want to do something special in the future like until there is a development of new products a design engineer is required right you now what is more uh, necessary in the current times is to understand the technicalities of design right you should not be a person who does not understand the engineering behind the design you need to understand the engineering behind the design for every component that subu is saying here so it can be seating it can be lighting it can be wiring harness it can be exteriors it can be interiors it can be any plastic thing right you need to understand the uh engineering principle so let me give you an example so while subu was speaking subu mentioned about something called draw direction right how many of you know what a draw direction is let's let's kind of see how many of you know what what the draw direction is what do you know about draw direction right okay um okay so i i look at no uh, okay a lot of you do not know what a draw direction is so let me ask subu what a draw direction is and why it is important for any design engineer to know what a draw direction is subu what is a draw direction and why it is important yes, sir coming to the point uh, i would add a white screen i would try drawing it so it looks more easier for a part huh? <clears throat> for us to see a part uh, uh i might be exaggerating in a drawing but uh, i am using a mouse it looks like that see 
now i have a hood this is how it looks from this side of the car and this hood is going to have a structure inside correct so now i am going to draw only the structure so my hood is going to look like this approximately and i have prepared this design and i am going to give this to my production colleagues they will decide what is going to be my punching direction or drawing direction okay they will say like this and this design is feasible for producing like this but if my design is like this if this is the punching direction your tool will go in but it will not come out so let so me so this is the draw direction let me let me kind of explain what subhu is trying to say right so if you think about this right uh, the inside component of a hood is a sheet metal right so if you think about a sheet metal a sheet metal is called a sheet metal because it is a sheet right it is flat now you need to make that sheet metal into the figure that subhu has drawn up uh, in the first uh, area right so how do you basically do that's where so that there's a phenomenon called punching or drawing right so you basically punch from the top then and you have a tool which is of the internal profile of what subhu has basically drawn and that internal profile is punched on the sheet metal so that you basically get this kind of a uh, uh, what should i say a uh, elongated u uh, kind of a u kind of a uh, design right now in the pre below diagram that subhu has done so you will get the shape but how will you get the tool out right so you these are things that you need to start thinking about because manufacturability is a prime co concern you need to take into account so subhu so please go ahead sorry yeah so uh, at this situation the tool will come in to pr produce the shape but there is no possibility for the tool to go out so how will a tool accommodate on the on the design what you have given so how is the tool going to produce what direction are we going to introduce the tool is we call, is, is what we call it as a draw direction so the direction in which the tool approaches the part is the draw direction and that is why every time when you design the part see now i have designed a part like this and they send this to my manufacturing colleagues they will see okay this part needs to be produced in two stages first stage are uh, two stages and it will need two different draw directions so now what they would say is okay uh, they will they, they they will this is the sheet metal what we have on the stage one you get a straight part and on the stage two where you do another direction you get this particular shape what we needed and this is two different stages of production and this is what the tooling colleagues or the production colleagues will will be designing and when they design this they call it as design of jigs and fixtures they 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 are preparing this jigs they are preparing this tools and they prepare the fixture to measure uh, whether the uh, part is to the design intention and again sir this design base i was also peeping into some of the questions raised by you uh, the cfd is an integration of the design field sir so the cfd person is the person who is simulating the results of the design what you have done sir see uh, you cfd person simulates a frontal grasp cfd person simulates a side impact cfd person simulates the load of the, the load carrier of the car which means that you cannot produce the part you 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 cannot produce the part to destroy it. you will have to simulate it and see and that is what the cfd team does and cfd team is also integrated to the design team cfd is not a separate team cfd is one among the complete design team so now to start with we start talking with the design of the components and next we will be validating the design what we have made and for validation we would need the cfd team and then you go to the production who is also initially validating your part and then they produce your components exactly so so, so 
So the the way that we have structured the AMA is uh, today you will basically look at say design. Tomorrow it will be on finite element analysis. Uh, so uh, then day after it will be on CFD, right? Now now thinking about the whole aspect of design, right? So. Uh, I was taking notes when basically uh, Subo was speaking and uh, the notes I was basically looking at was uh, say the design phase, what are the different uh, uh, modules that are there uh, and in the production phase, what are the different modules that are there, right? And these are like very, very, uh, I, I've just uh, been a little, uh, uh, these are my notes alone. So I haven't taken it in detail, right? But if you think about it, if you want to become a design engineer, Right? How do you start? A lot of you did not know what a draw direction was. A lot of you did not know what a BIW was. And there are uh, multiple things, right? So, for example, I can uh, uh, say what is a, what does snow load criteria mean in designing a roof? What does heat distortion mean? Uh, what is a gate? What is a uh, uh, there are certain fundamental things that I can ask. I'm pretty sure you guys might not be able to answer it right now, right? But these are aspects that you are required to understand. So whenever you apply to a job and the job guy, uh, the company comes back and says, hey, I need experience. What they basically mean is they are looking for experience, not in the tool. You can say, hey, I've designed these many components. That's fine. They are not asking you for experience in the tool. The experience in the tool is important, but it is not the prime thing that can help you crack an interview. The as if you want to get into say BAW design engineer for designing a hood, as I said before, you need to understand the functional requirement, safety requirement, design requirement, and uh, gap in freshness requirement. Right? In in all of these, we also missed the GDNT part. But this is what you need to understand, and that is where your ability to crack interviews comes into play. Right? So so. I, I did see a question on what, how skilling can help us and what are the courses that we do, right? So the idea of skilling primarily is uh, uh, to provide industry relevant courses, right? Because we think these should be the things that are taught in college. Unfortunately, they are not taught, but that's fine. Uh, we cannot do anything out that, but we can definitely learn that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I did today is kind of, I also wanted to give an, uh, since we have uh, Subu in the call, I wanted to take Subu's thought process on some of our master courses, right? So if you go to skilling.com, there are master courses, our master courses are job leading courses. So for example, in design, we have design engineers master program. Uh, we have a master's certification program in automotive design. Uh, we have a master's certification program in passenger car design manufacturing design, BAW fixture design, and solid, uh, solid, uh, solid works design and analysis, right? I'm going to take four courses and ask Subbu's thought process on how this course will help the, uh, a student in getting into what kind of a domain, right? Subbu, our first course is our design engineers master's program. Here, the student basically in our product ideation and design using solid and surface modeling, he basically learns how to design a Harley Davidson bike and a yacht. Then he basically goes into sheet metal basics where he understands about different sheet metal processes that are that uh, how to create a tab or wedges and, and so on, right? Then he learns about GDNT. Then he comes into automotive body and wide design. Say he, again, you are one of the instructor of this course where he basically, you we basically teach um, the student how to design food, fender, roof, tailgate, side body and side door. Uh, and then we basically have plastic design using Katia V5, where you look at an interior panel and the exterior components. And then we look into mold design using SOLIDWORKS. So what do you think about this course? And what do you think this course uh, would help for engineers? So, uh, okay, uh, might not be, uh, okay, uh, see, thinking from the company's perspective, Perspective, sir. Uh, firstly, when a person starts <clears throat> a career, after this course, I could at least see that uh, uh, he would be he would at least have a little knowledge about the sheet metal, this geometric dimension and tolerancing, that is this GDNT, and little of the plastic. And when he is designing some, uh, I 
I heard that you were uh, somebody is designing a vehicle, correct, on solid works or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After, so he might also be an expert on a surface modeling or a solid modeling. Okay. Okay. See, the reason for this kind of structuring of this course is like one should understand that there is no separate surface modeling and there is no separate solid modeling. When you design a skin panel or when you design a part on the outer structure, then that might involve surface modeling. When you design the structures, the interior strength reinforcing components, then that might be solid modeling. So this program is differentiated in such a way that you, at the end of the day, uh, become competent enough in solid modeling and surface modeling. And also after modeling, you should know if this part is producible or not. And if this part, uh, if, if there are two parts coming with contact with each other, how is the dimensioning and tolerancing done? That is there. And I could also see that you also get a brief idea about plastic designs. So <clears throat> some of the BAW components will also have plastic components adjacent to each other. So fender will have a fender protector. Fender protector is the mudguard. Fender is the side, is a side cover from the hood, right? So when you, when you work together with multiple components, you get to know different production processes. So I feel that that a person who, who can do this would be a uh, much more eligible candidate to get into an industry. Because, see, we, we've been interviewing so many people, uh, so many candidates in our companies. Uh, the, the companies where I work before, the companies where I'm working now, we try interviewing for freshers. And uh, uh, I would be really happy to see a person who already knows these basics. Correct. That would be a distinguishing factor from the crowd who is actually only showing uh, 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 the projects what he done in school, what he done in universities, and what he studied. Apart from that, this is going to also show an interest over the field, basically. So, if uh, if there is a person who can uh, show at least a small bit, uh, I mean, uh, when you do all these courses, you may remember at least. 10 or 20 percent very thoroughly in your mind and that 10 20 percent if you exhibit on a right way i think uh, uh, you will be the right candidate to get into the industry i could uh, uh, see this course as that way so uh, touching on all the fields touching on all uh, touching on all the processes is the best part of this course is what i feel sir Great. Uh, thanks, Abu. So, uh, so what? So, let me do one thing. As as our students work on courses, right? What they do is they end up working on projects as well. Say, for example, uh, let me show a few uh, student, and uh, let me know if uh, you would be um, able if you would interview this guy uh, for any role. So. Let me kind of so okay. Let's see Vardhan, right? So Vardhan is in our BAW fixtures uh, design coursework, and uh, so this is his profile. As a student takes a coursework, he creates his own portfolio, and uh, probably works on a lot of projects. Say uh, Vardhan has worked on multiple projects, right? Say for example, let me uh, open up the hood design and design of back door as well. So if somebody works on this kind of a uh, so project what would you think when you interview this candidate say for example Vardhan is designing this particular uh, 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 fixture for this particular uh, design let me I could see that he has done a project on food on the back door sir that would be more related uh, yeah, yeah. See this picture. so this is the yes. hood design of a car in NX CAD right uh -huh. and uh, say for example he has taken a master sketch and uh, designed the outer panel and then he is speaking about hemming uh, design of inner panel how to design inner panel sir, I was talking about this difference only sir uh, uh, I mean everybody I, I think we have uh, quite number of uh, quite a huge number of participants in this in this in this meeting itself uh, see when we see hood we see just as the skin panel uh, can we go to the first image and yes see we just see this part of the hood when we see the car and if there is a person who is competent enough in knowing what the inner structure is how the inner structure is going to believe or behave then that is the distinguishing factor of Vartan. so this guy would be definitely on one among the top shortlisting candidates 
I could definitely say this need not be only me. Anybody who is going to interview Arthur is going to be definitely impressed. And and when you see this back door, what do you think about this? And see the way he has presented, sir. That also is interesting. He say he shows us the back door. He shows us the inner panel also. There are some structures also. Yes, of course there can be a lot of possibilities to improve this model. But I cannot expect more than this from a fresher. He is not five years experienced today. He is just a fresher who has interest in automotive industry. I can see there are lots of mistakes. Uh, I can see some mistakes here. Yes, but he had made the hemming of the part. He had made a first level deep drawing simulation, and he shows where the stress is going to flow. What else can I expect from a fresher, sir? This is what is making a Vartan a different candidate from the rest of the crowd. I don't know how many of the people who had worked uh, uh, who are, who is a fresher. can get this kind of exposure or can work on these kind of models uh, i hope you understand what i mean sir and see yeah, yeah. when a person is also can you little scroll up sir i wanted to see that uh, yes yes see this jigger picture sir see you see sir yeah this is fine yeah so uh, you see sir he has actually produced the part and he is now actually placing it somewhere to check the dimensions of the part if i can i can at least say okay he uh, even varthan would have not even thought on these directions he has just done what uh, what was told to us but when he wants to when he goes for an interview when he is showing this challenge to the interviewer he may explain okay what is this doing what have you done in this he would at least repeat what was given to him and what was, what had he done to do this that is sufficient for a fresher is what my point is that is the extraordinary level of uh, uh, skill set what one can expect from a fresher and and i was thinking uh, when i was in engineering i did not have the chance to do this actually <laughs> i wouldn't have even tried when i was uh, 18 or i wouldn't have even tried when i was 21 22 sir exactly um, so so uh, so i i did see a comment uh, where uh, i think vinay kumar uh, basically ask me uh, how does your course help a student who doesn't have any relevant knowledge on software tools and uh, there was abirag who was asking how can fresher coming out of college know all these things all these things so one of the things that you need to understand is obviously the engineering curriculum is not teaching it right we all know that but what you can do is you can learn these skills by looking into platforms that provide these skills right so for, for example skilling is a, a platform where you can get these skills right uh, you can and this is just one aspect of it uh, there is seating design there is a uh, uh, lighting design there is a bw fixture design there is wiring harness design so i wanted to show one particular student um, i don't know mm -hmm. if i can uh, find that particular student but i think you would be really interested in uh, seeing this particular student uh, let me kind of uh, show you um thanks it was yeah sagar kumar so what he did was uh this is a project that he did and uh, uh so this is the back door that he did in the biw course then he built mm -hmm. the wiring harness for that course right <laughs> yeah so so And let me kind of show you a detailed picture where uh, mm. say some something like this, Subhu. Got it, sir. So sir, uh, this 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 image is enough, sir. Uh, I can see his competency. Okay, how how well he has utilized. Okay, I can annotate the first. I don't have the annotation uh, access. Is it? Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> give me one minute. I'll uh, allow you to do. uh yeah please go ahead yes sir the way he has used this hole tells me his competency sir okay. the way he has used this hole tells me the competency you know see the how have he used this as an access hole for him to produce the power to the wiper driver what else is needed see this hole how have he used this uh, hole to use as a power socket for uh, uh, taking the wire inside and i can see here that uh, he had made some holes on the back door to mount it with the clips what else do i need to if i want if i'm going to recruit a harness engineer if i see his profile if i see 
this project this is sufficient for me to take him as a harness engineer this is highly sufficient for me to take him as a harness engineer this 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 is equal uh, but i might not choose him as a bw engineer for sure because there are quite some abnormalities but the way he has utilized his knowledge or the way he has started thinking over this harness approaches over the holes placing of the uh, 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 placing of the uh, buttons for the, the for, uh, see placing of the clips these things are sufficient sir, for me correct and uh, i don't know what is sagar do you know we see uh, a very high experienced person or if he is just a student or sagar is a student then this is really a national washing sagar sagar is a fresher uh, who see, basically yeah. Uh, did all these things and and there are a lot of freshers in our platform who basically take our courses and basically do really really well, right? And uh, and uh, these are things that kind of motivate us because we did not have like I think not only we did not have this opportunity even right now in engineering colleges there is no opportunity. Right. Right? Uh, so uh, this is this is kind of a very very uh, kind of. Uh, inspiring for me or to say the word right um so yeah See, the nomenclatures of the parts is also really equivalent to uh, how we name it in our companies push button cable see uh, this guy has been really uh, working uh, the, the interest is seen here sir the nomenclatures of the parts asim car body harness geometrical bundle see uh, <laughs> the nomenclatures are also really uh, equivalent to a no em level Great. He, Great. He, he he is uh, uh, showing interest. Yes, nice. Yeah. So, guys, uh, one thing that I wanted to kind of uh, explain to you today was uh, um, a lot of you are asking me how how you can build uh, these kind of profiles in chat. And one thing that I want to kind of uh, say is that uh, we have built a really really good coursework. Say, for example, this is. master certification program in complete passenger car design and development and here you look into automotive class a surfacing mm -hmm. using alias surface modeling of an aston martin car automotive sheet metal design automotive lighting design automotive plastic design automotive seating design right so very similar to this we have a um, another course in manufacturing design where you look into um, plastic injection molding baw fixture design and so on right uh, so we have built a really really great courses that will allow students to basically uh, build a strong portfolio right so what we are doing is uh, actually I, i do not know if you know this we our master courses basically have placement assistance as well right uh, so we have two types of uh, three types of plans a basic plan a pro plan and a premium plan so the basic plan is uh, you pay 22500 per month for 6 months i think it comes to somewhere around 1 lakh 35000 um your pro plan and in the basic you get 6 month course access and uh, that's it your pro basically you have 1 year course access and uh, job assistance and master's assistance this month we, uh, was our uh, 250th placement and uh, so basically it's 2 lakh 75000 uh, uh, Sorry, twenty-seven thousand five hundred for six months. Per month, you pay twenty-seven thousand five hundred, and over the period of six months, you pay one lakh sixty-five thousand. And this is thirty-five thousand per month for six months. What we are doing for the next five days, and especially for people who are attending this workshop, is uh, we are providing the premium course at the price of the basic course. Premium course, you have lifetime course access, so you can take a look at the course at any point in time. So, if you guys are interested in something like this. do let us know uh, just let uh... uh so basically guys if you are really interested in entering this program you can submit your contact information which involves mail id and uh, contact number to my uh, to, to message me privately or publicly it's totally your call so i'll just take a note of it and one of our technical support engineers will get in touch with you shortly yeah so one of the things that i want you guys to uh take from this session is uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunities right there are a lot of opportunities uh, available in the indian uh, manufacturing mechanical engineering automotive engineering domains right the only thing that we basically miss is the having the right skills having the right skills is so important that uh, companies 
do not even look for say three years or four years of experience sometimes and if you have the right skill and if you are a fresher and we have had we have had cases where people from ford have hired a fresher for a three year experience role just because he had the right skills right so building a portfolio of projects becomes really really important right so if you guys are interested in something and uh, i want to take a minute to kind of uh, make sure i thank subbu because uh, i basically would have loved this kind of a interaction when i was doing my engineering right unfortunately a lot of us uh, i know subbu basically is of the same uh, batch as mine and uh, a lot of us me subbu saran did not have the opportunity to learn these skills right and that's why we basically uh, in parallel with our jobs or in in my case basically quitting our jobs and moving back to india and doing this full time is because we truly believe that there is real value in providing the right kind of courses to students right so if you are someone who is interested in the course in any design masters course or uh, automotive design masters course uh what i would definitely uh, recommend is uh, providing your name email id and phone number to kaushik or in the general chat box we will reach out to you and provide you more information right so this is something that i wanted to let you know i think there are a few questions uh, abhishek board uh, if i am semi skilled in ca domain and also basic knowledge on cfd but i am little bit confused about which course actually advantages me uh, abhishek what you can do is you can basically take the number uh so you can reach out to us it's 9809805252 so we basically have free counseling sessions uh to help you understand what course you can basically take up right uh so this is something that you can basically take a uh, reach out to and uh, um so yeah uh, definitely something that you can speak to us and we can help you out vinay kumar reddy um among all courses provided in skilling which course have job guarantee in europe because i already a master student in italy when i more than job guarantee see uh, to be very very uh, honest right job guarantee is something uh, a guarantee is something that um, something a little tricky right you should not even if somebody gives you a guarantee you should not think that just by paying the money the guarantee is there right you at the end of the day need to work on the projects and that's what guarantees you you need to understand what guarantees you uh, and you it needs to make sense to you because if somebody says i guarantee you a job just by taking money right it does not mean anything but if somebody basically uh, if someone says you will build a project portfolio and that project portfolio will build uh, give you a, a assistance or a guarantee to get a job that's more of what you need to look into right uh, more than that say if you are looking into say in any domain right in italy or in europe or in us all these three design cae and cfd are there are a lot of jobs right uh, so one, one thing that you need to look into is what is your area of interest right if you like fluid dynamics if you like thermodynamics then probably cfd is your role if you like strength of materials if you like uh, finite element analysis then probably fea uh, cae uh, might be your uh, calling if you like design right then design might be your calling so you need to start thinking fundamentally um, there is no one role i can say hey it is guaranteed uh, every role uh, what guarantees you a job is you doing something that you like because only when you like things you will go deep in spend a lot of hours and develop a portfolio and that is basically the winning formula right um aish tiwari yeah uh, um okay uh, any other questions guys to subbu and me if you want we we, we have another 5 to 10 minutes we can uh, answer any questions uh if you have questions regarding the course work if you have any other questions regarding your career you can let us know uh, you can basically reach out uh, if you are interested in the course work just basically get in touch with you and uh, provide you more details about the course work so yeah if you if you will basically take 2 minutes and see if there are any questions if not basically uh, we'll end this meeting uh, so subbu any last thoughts uh or that you would recommend for this uh, okay uh, i'm not a very big fan of giving advices or taking advices also 
uh, this need not be an advice you can just uh, uh, ignore if you don't want to take it uh, 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 my strong point is you don't have to be worried about uh, 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 this covid current situations this is not anyways going to impact uh, this is not anyway going to have a high impact on the transport industry of course there are going to be some economic crises is going to happen yes that is there for sure because any crisis like this is going to have these kind of impacts but we as a professors or we as a students or we as an engineers don't have to be afraid of it let us take it on a positive direction that we use this opportunity to learn something new to get in contact with people who are uh, uh, in line to our thinking and speak with them get some courage get some knowledge gaining knowledge you don't generally get the time if you are working you have your office work to do if you are studying in the university you have your university exams where you have to reproduce the book what you had learned etc etc but this time you will not get again so use this time as an opportunity to learn something new go beyond your go go towards your aspirations go to your towards your interest uh, Uh, the time is going to turn really green for everybody that i would want to say, definitely say so don't be afraid of this covid situations there are going to be job losses but that is not going to impact transport industry a lot for sure sir i could say this if at all there is a economic crisis we are going to get back to normal very 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 soon yeah thank you sir bro uh, nikunj where to get the gdnt knowledge is there any book recommendation for that uh nikunj that is the gdnt course in skill link if you want you can basically take a look at that um uh, what happens in your job assistance omkar yadav so omkar we basically uh, schedule 10 there are two types of things that we do in our job job assistance we basically we uh, we partner with companies we schedule at least 10 interviews uh, where you basically uh, okay let me kind of explain the process you first take a master course you work on 16 to 17 projects that i basically showed uh, showed you very similar to that uh the second uh, 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 once you basically work on projects once you develop your portfolio then comes the second aspect of okay applying to interviews so there are two things that we do we basically help you apply to interviews the second thing that we do is we arrange interviews for you so we recommend doing both so we arrange at least 8 to 10 interviews and what we have seen is uh, for a good candidate uh, if they attend at least 10 interviews they get two to three jobs so that's our job assistance right so just to kind of uh, give you a idea nikunj i explained that gdnt uh, i'm second year abid uh, ahmed i'm second year mix student i'm interested in electric vehicle a lot what are skills to enhance my career also being from a tier 2 college so see nikun uh, abid ahmed uh, if you are interested in say electric vehicles then you need to start thinking about what are you interested in are you interested in motors are you interested in battery are you interested in uh, electric uh, drives are you interested in uh, uh automatic uh, 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 advanced driver assisted systems so there are multiple modules right so something that you need to start thinking about is how do you learn these skills right uh we do have a masters in electric vehicle and masters in hybrid electric vehicle course do take a look at that abid ahmed if you are interested and if not if you, we have introductory courses as well so a lot of second and third year students take up our master courses so uh, <coughs> something to take a look at uh strinidhi desai uh sir please, please tell about programming course for mechanical engineering srinidhi uh you can take a look at our machine learning uh machine learning and artificial intelligence for mechanical engineers coursework it's a python based coursework that you can basically take a look at or if you are interested in computational fluid dynamics you can take a look at our computational fluid dynamics masters program or cfd using matlab and open form it's again a programming based course so something to take a look at if you want more uh, details just put your name in the email id we can basically get in touch with you and provide your details um so prashant kumar uh, currently i am in us if i take any course can you place in us companies obviously right so for example uh, i'll uh, basically show you shresha so this uh, shresha basically did his uh, masters in us uh, he did his masters in mtu i think uh, let me um i think mtu um so he finished his masters in mtu and uh, then took our uh, cfd masters coursework and he is now working at a 
uh, as a senior design engineer at uh, Optimum uh, Engineering Solutions in Illinois, uh, and yeah, Illinois, uh, I think in Chicago, Illinois, but uh, uh, probably somewhere around that. Um, uh, Manish Sahu didn't touch CFD. Please tell something about that. Manish, uh, please wait till Monday. We will definitely take a look at uh, uh, CFD as well. Shreya, we do have aeronautical courses. We do have courses on aerospace engineering. Uh, we do advanced aerodynamics uh, courses. So something that you can basically take a look at. If you are interested, uh, do provide your name, email ID, and phone number to uh, Kaushik. We will basically get in touch with you and provide you more details. Uh, Abiram, uh, aeronautical domain courses. So I, I think I answered that, didn't touch. So guys, uh, if you are in the US or Europe, uh, and if you are doing your master's, you can definitely get a job out there. If it's the harder thing is you basically are in India and you want a job in the US, that's pretty like 99% not possible because uh, of visa restrictions. So, um, so yeah, uh, if you are in India and if you want a job in India, our coursework will definitely help you. Um, Abhirami, uh, Abhiram, Ma, uh, avionic coursework right now, no, uh, right now we do not have any avionics course. Adil Chek, sir, recent CFT jobs ask for experience and freshers uh, job are less. What to do? Adil, you need to kind of build your portfolio with CFD experience. Say, for example, in CFD, there will be 1D, 2D, and 3D tools. And also, you need to understand the different uh, uh, type of, uh, say, what is uh, finite volume method, what is vinyl uh, difference, what are the different types of discretization. Uh, they, there are multiple things, right? Uh, CFD is a a uh, very big field like design. So uh, you need to have a specific domain-based experience in a particular domain so that you can uh, get the job, uh, even if you are a fresher. Uh, 